Good morning, football fans. It's Saturday and it's time for your breakfast helping of Cherry Chat. Uh, today, we are doing a news roundup and a Super 6 update. So we're going to go through what's going on at the football club and also look at predictions for the games coming up this weekend. But I can't do it because I'm not very good at that stuff. I've got someone who's better. I've got Tony Funnel. How are you, Tony? Very well, yeah. I don't know how much better I could be. I'm not sure. I think you do well yourself. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're a, well, I'm not going to say what position you're in, but you're still in a lofty position in our Super 6 league, aren't you? I'm having to go. I'm having to go at it, I? Yeah, we'll come on to that a bit later. Uh, so, Tony, have you had a nice week? Everything all right with you? Yeah. Same old, same old, unfortunately, at the moment. Yeah. Until, I suppose, five weeks' time when I get those clubs out again and clean them off. Yeah, lovely. Lovely stuff. Uh, speaking of clubs, Bournemouth uh, a, a football club and we're not doing particularly great at the moment, Tony, we've appointed Jonathan Woodgate. You and I were speculating last week, only last week, God, time flies, uh, what might happen. Uh, and we went with Woodgate in the end. He was he was in our top three, wasn't he, Tony, of who it might be? Um, and they had a game against Cardiff. Have you heard much about that game, Tony? I watched, I watched the first half. Unfortunately, um, to say it was disappointing was an understatement. Had a lot of the ball, but didn't go anywhere with it. I think, again, too slow on the ball. There was, there was no urgency or any passion. There, there was no fight. And those are the sort of things you want. You know, the, we want Bournemouth to get out of the championship. Yeah. You know, the way they're playing, they're happy to be in it. Yeah, completely, Tony. And as you yeah. rightly said, lots of the ball, but nothing going on. Lots of passing and sort of lines around the back and not a lot of penetration into into the Cardiff Cardiff uh, area really not and no crosses which is a shame no i mean you can see a lot of possession there but you know you don't get out of the championship just playing pretty pretty football no you've got to dig in and fight and scrap yeah completely you know, to get points in games you know i think Teams are quite happy just let you pass the ball around before the halfway line. Yeah, very disappointed. Things have got to improve a lot, haven't they? Yeah, things have got to change. I mean, Bournemouth have tried to make some moves to improve things, we think. Um, obviously, we brought in Jonathan Woodgate, and Jonathan Woodgate has now started bringing in some of his own people. So, uh, I don't know if you know about this, Tony, but we got this chap in here. This is uh, Gary O'Neill, Tony. It's been you know a good player name? in the past, mm. and the you know West Ham United, Portsmouth. Uh, hopefully, I mean he's he's learned a few things up at Liverpool, things that might be able to help the club. So, you know that should be okay for us. I think it should be okay for us. Uh, not the only coach that's come in though, Tony. You might know this guy a little bit better, certainly by his reputation. And actually, at the game, watching at the game, was this guy here? Yeah, another coach. Another you know, coach. There's more coaches than we have players in our day. Yeah, and but I think there's... I will say one thing. I think possibly um, Joe Jordan's presence around the club hopefully will change a few things. You know, a bit of the old school management style. Maybe that's what some of the players need, you know, for the rest of the season. Yeah, might might well do. Um, we know he's a no-nonsense kind of kind of guy. He was uh, Southampton, wasn't he, Tony? But I think probably a few years after you, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah, after me, yeah. Yeah, good player, tough old player. You wouldn't want to mess around with him. No, no. And it's interesting you talk about the amount of coaches. There's a bit of speculation. Chris Temple on uh, Twitter today said that maybe with so many coming in, some might be needing to go out, which when you've had a lot of that club staff there for quite a long time, uh, you know, the, the staff that, that Eddie built, really. Uh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, well, these are things that are going to happen when you get new managers coming. You know, you can't help that, can you? But no. um, I think where Joe Jordan's concerned, I mean, he was with Harry at Southampton, West Ham and Portsmouth, was it, I think? Yeah. You know, they were up at the top of the league, played good football, in Europe, Harry wouldn't have surrounded himself with Joe Jordan 
at so many clubs if he didn't do some good things. So hopefully it'll um, change things because it, it certainly does need to change things there at the moment, doesn't it? It does, yeah. A lot of these people coming in all seem to have links to Harry. Interesting. Yeah, right? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, one chap, though, Tony, that we were talking about last week, as well as Mr. Woodgate, was Mr. Vavavum himself, Thierry Henry. And what's really interesting is uh, the news just came out, actually, very, very recently, that Thierry Henry has left his job at Montreal. Now, he was very strongly linked to the point that some news sources actually thought he'd been offered the job and it was as good as done before Woodgate got the role. So, Tony Funnel, do you think perhaps that shenanigans midweek has something to do with Thierry Henry leaving his current role? Uh, possibly. I mean, I did um, see it on the internet and uh, he did leave for family reasons. Hmm. And I must say, I thought he hadn't done anything at uh, Montreal, but... Um, they, they they reached the playoffs for the first time in four years. So, you know, he, he was quite successful out there. And um, maybe um, the talk of Bournemouth, has, that's part of it, made him think, well, actually, I will come back with the family because there's jobs going to be available in England. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the, the interesting thing about him as well is a lot of people in the media discredited him as a, as a genuine candidate for the job because of his lack of knowledge of championship football. Some people go as far as to say, was he actually ever been to a championship game? Has he watched one? Does he know who the players are? If you think that that's your way into football, starting at the championship, if that's where he believes his starting level should be, then maybe he will come and get an education first and spend some time watching. What do you think? Yeah, you never know. Um... I think it, it is it is important because you've got like um, Mick McCarthy. Mm. He knows his way around the championship. There's mm. lots of managers with experience. They know the players to get because, you know, it's getting the right players to get you out of the championship. Not necessarily they're good enough to be playing in the premiership when you get there, but you need certain players that can handle the championship and play consistently week in, week out. And when I say consistently, not only is it consistently being able to play on the ball, consistently being able to strong, being able to clear your defence, boot the ball, do yeah. some of the nasty things. And certain players do it week in, week out. And in Championship Division 1, they're godsend to certain teams. Those teams get promoted and go to the Premiership, they probably go somewhere else. Because, you know, they can't play that kind of football in the Premiership. Yeah. But you need a certain style, I think, to get out of the Championship. You need fighters, don't you? Oh, you've got to have a few fighters, yeah. 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 And players who can do it week in, week out, because there's so many games coming up. Uh, this chap here, Tony Funnel, a lot of people, board fans, you know, to them, he was a fighter. Dan Goslin, gone to Watford, and they're going great guns, aren't they? I know. He was in the team the other night, wasn't he? He was. Uh, we'll have a little look at the Championship League in a minute, Tony. But uh, what do you think might happen? What's 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 your feeling about the game at the moment? It's going to be a hard game for Bournemouth. Um, very good side, Watford. Um, very good going forward. But if you watch the clips from their game uh, in midweek, their goals, the second one came from a cross and it was a bit scrappy. The first one which is an up and under and someone chased a lost cause and uh, got the, the ball over the keeper's head and in the goal. They weren't great goals, but like I said, sometimes you've got to get the scrappy goals. They all count at the end of the day. Um, but I also noticed in the midweek game that they, um, they weren't so clever in defence. So, you know, that's something for Bournemouth to look at and, you know, they can capitalise on it. You know, it might not be, like most people think, another defeat for Bournemouth. They might be able to get something out of the game. Yeah, you never know. Uh, here is the, the championship at the moment, Tony. This is what the league looks like. Norwich going great, aren't they? Yeah, I think, obviously, 
Norwich, I thought they were one of the bankers for going up anyway. Yeah. And I think as a club, they're prepared to go up and down. They can handle going down and they know what to do to get back up again. Um, so, I'd, you know, Norwich would be one of my fancies for going up. And they have had a rough patch um, until yesterday. But now that's over. I think Brentford will push on. And uh, I'd pick Brentford. And it looks like I'm just obviously picking the top three. But I think you've got to pick Watford as well. You know, the, the side they got. Bournemouth in seventh. At the moment, if you look at the the form over the last 15, 16 games, I wouldn't go for Bournemouth at all. No. Um, but saying that, if they can push on now with the changes they made, there's a good chance if they can get certain players to start fighting a bit more and get their game going, I think they could get the uh, to the playoffs. And then if you get to the playoffs, they're only sort of single games aren't they in a cup final yeah anything can happen so you can get you know your results through the playoffs so Bournemouth you know it's not all loss for Bournemouth but it's a long old route now I think you know, they've got to sort themselves out very quickly what I would say is what I'd be disappointed at really is that as a club we didn't go out and get a championship a proven championship goal scorer in the summer who's going to get you 20 plus goals, even if it's one that, like I said earlier, you ain't going to use him in the Premiership, but he's done his job, he's got you out of the Championship, then you can go and get your other players, the players that can play in the Premiership. So, yeah, disappointed there because I think no matter what manager uh, had taken over Bournemouth this year, a, a top striker would have been so you know, helpful and vital to them. I think that's the, the major difference. And everyone was saying, no, we've got a great squad of players. We've got, you know, good midfield, loads of midfield players. We've got, um, you know, a, a good defence. Oh, well, yeah, you have, but we haven't got a proven strike force up front. No. I mean, I'm... I think Dominic Slanky's back fit now, so that's handy. Yeah. But still, I think I'd have been a lot more confident if Bournemouth has got a striker signing. You can't you can't let players go and not replace the majority or part of their goals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Callum Wilson, Josh King. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, that is is a is a problem. Uh but what's not a problem, Tony, is moving on now, our super six. So what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna flash up our super six league as it is now. Let's have a little look at that. Here we go. What do you think of that, Tony Funnel? Yes, I, I tell you, it is. I talked to uh, my son-in-law about it this afternoon, and uh, I was saying to him, it's quite tight still. It is quite tight. I mean, the points, you know, you're only, you're, well, it's not even 100 points. It's not even hardly 20 points, is it, between 10th and, and top? Uh, yeah, well, I, and I, I must have butted in because I knew he was going to say that. Did I you? said to my son-in-law, I said, I bet he's going to say, Tony, you're in 10th. Well, I'd rather say... I'm in joint seventh because I swear we're on the same ah, points. Ah, look at that. Yes, you are. Yes. Wow yes. So I'm not having it. I'm not tenth. Joint seventh. Thank <laughs> you, <Tony>. <laughs> joint <laughs> seventh. I don't know why they put you in tenth then, Tony. They must, they must have some kind of extra, you know, criteria that they use, like goal difference or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know either. I don't know either. How are you feeling about this week? Yeah, quite confident. Yeah. It was a, it was a, a, how many points did you get last time? Well, to be honest, I had a disappointing Saturday and got two points. Right. But then I came back in midweek with 11 points. I got a five pointer and three two points. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good turnaround. Again, that, that's what tends to happen with you, isn't it? You sort of start slow and then you speed up at the end. Try to. Try to. Now, yeah. Nowadays, especially if I was playing football, I start slow and I finish slow. <laughs> I think you can still do a job, Tone. Let's have a little look at our fixtures then that we need predictions for this week. Uh, we're going to start with West Brom against Brighton. Tony Funnel. Yeah, I've gone for a one-all draw. One-all. 
scooching along this way here. We've got Swansea against Bristol City. Yeah, I'm going for 2 0 Swansea. 2 0 Swansea. Bristol City uh, got uh, a new manager in this week, Tony. Did you see that? I know. You know, sometimes their fortunes change and they get a new manager, but I'm, I'm still plumping for uh, Swansea. Still plumping for Swansea. They're a good team, Swansea. Uh, Borough against Cardiff. Yeah, I'm going for 2 1 to Cardiff. Yeah, I like that. They are doing great at the moment. Uh, then we've got Brentford against Stoke, Tony. Brentford, I'm, I'm hoping they got their goal scoring back after the midweek game. And I'm going 3-1 to Brentford. 3-1 to Brentford. Rotherham against Reading. All the R's. Yeah, I'm going for a sneaky 1-0 win for Reading. All right, fair enough. And then Barnsley against Millwall. I'm going 2-1 to Barnsley. 2-1. Two, 2-1, one. Two, one, Tony. Yeah. I think I was already one this week. Right, and then we've got, right, we got, go we got a golden goal. Golden go I'm going four minutes. Four minutes. Brill. Head to head with Jeff. Yes, we'll go head to head with Jeff. Thank you very much. Submit our entry. And that is that. Done. Well done, Tony Funnel. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. Yeah, interesting times. Uh, there was a video out uh, this week on, on Back of the Net. If you do get a chance, please check it out. It goes into even more detail on that Cardiff game and maybe some of the things that are going on with the club and the feelings of some fans on, on where we're going this season. Things aren't looking particularly bright at the moment. Here's hoping, fingers crossed, something changes. Yeah, I mean, fingers crossed, uh, what we said earlier, the changes that have been made in midweek, um, Bournemouth can get a result. I mean, I think against Watford, a draw would be a good result and uh, they can push on from there and um, hopefully get into the playoffs. Hopefully so. So from me and from Tony Fano, it's... Adios. Adios. I, I, try, I always want to try and say it at the same time, but I haven't got it yet. Uh, and up the cherries. <laughs>